Modern Warfare 2's new DMZ mode has been out for a while, so we pretty much know everything now, right? Wrong! Like, did you know that you could repair vehicle tires just by hopping out of the car and pressing the action button on them? Maybe you did, but I just discovered it yesterday, so lay off, Kimusabi! This video is gonna be full of little tips and some big that I think most of you are unaware of. I am Player2, I cover new and upcoming extraction looter shooters like DMZ, so to stay updated, consider subscribing! Now let me back out of this so we can pull up the gameplay. Oh, damn it! I thought I deleted this old browser. With Opera GX, this doesn't happen anymore. You can actually force darkness across all web pages, no matter what. Which is perfect for nocturnals like me or Smeagol. I've been using them for over a year now as my default gaming browser, so I'm super excited to announce them as the sponsor of today's video. I can't tell you how convenient the integrations are. You can connect Spotify, Discord, your Twitch. Oh, Sasha Gray is live. But most importantly, all of this falls under Opera GX control, which is the main reason you need to get this browser right now. With all my apps and browser pages constantly open, I was lagging pretty often. GX control allows you to limit the CPU, RAM, and even bandwidth usage that the browser can take up in the background. So if you connected apps like Discord and Spotify that are usually running while you play, they now fall under that umbrella as well. You can control exactly how much usage you will allow them to take up straight from the browser sidebar. This is a game changer. The load that PC gaming is putting on our computers is only getting heavier. Opera GX is the answer to a smooth experience with less lag and frame drops. Not to mention, it looks pretty damn good. Your homepage isn't just a search bar, it gives you a list of practically every upcoming game release, with the option to hop in on the game's launch page. Huh, Dead Space Remastered's coming out on January 27th. Sweet. Pretty much everybody I know already has Opera GX, but if you don't, download link is in the description below. Now for the first tip, let's talk Xfil choppers. There are multiple ways to use the Xfil chopper besides just hopping in the main bay like a normie. You can hang on the side to avoid enemy players inside, you can land on the top which requires a bit more finesse and only works if the chopper is at a location where you can parachute down to it, or you can play it like a boss and land on the nose of the heli and then clap the team inside while they flurry around trying to figure out where the fuck you are. That was pretty good. That was pretty good. This is a newer tactic that I have not seen a lot of people using, so try this one out before more players start to figure it out. And if you're one of the players that gets downed while inside the Xfil chopper, so long as you don't get full downed, you can still successfully extract. But to even make it to the Xfil chopper, you need to survive. This section is going to focus more on that. One of the main things that I barely see any other players doing is stacking self revives and armor plates. Within your active slots, you can have one self revive and three armor plates, but in your backpack, you can stow extras that'll automatically get thrown into your active slots whenever the other ones are used. Revive pistols are king as they can not only be used to shoot your down squad mates and revive them, but they also can be used to revive yourself. The pistol automatically gets used before your active self revive and it's going to effectively destroy the item after, regardless of how many uses it had left on it. Now when you add in two or three extra self revives, you're basically giving yourself three or four lives. As most of your engagements are going to revolve around the AI, who will usually stop shooting you once you're downed. Unlike enemy players, if you're downed by them, they'll keep going while calling you a pussy. It's COD. But to be honest, who downs you more? Enemy players or aimbot AI that can two tap you with a double barrel from 30 yards away? Let me know in the comments below. But for that reason, having the extra self revives and at least one slot in your backpack dedicated to three additional armor plates is key. While on this topic, I think that the backpack is actually highly underused as a defensive measure and mostly just left to holding random loot. If you come across an armor box field upgrade per se, even if you already have a revive pistol equipped, you should always stow that as a secondary field upgrade in your backpack. As I'm positive, it's going to come in more handy for you and your squad than that $50 wrench that you had in there. If you guys need plates, you can just swap out the revive pistol in your active slot, drop the plate box, and then pop the pistol right back into your active slot. If you have a medium or large backpack, you should have plenty of room to store your valuable loot as well as some extra items to help you survive. The third weapon slot that comes in the two larger backpacks is also an underused feature. I see people using it all the time to extract a weapon so that they can add more to their contraband stash, but what about using it in the raid that you're currently 
in. My favorite is when I pick up an RPG of some sort, as now I have a long range sniper, preferably with a suppressor, my LMG so I can eat through heavily armored AI and players without having to reload, and now an RPG that I can easily open my backpack up, equip, and take down a vehicle or a juggernaut. But once again, this only works if you have the extra weapon slot. So you need to have a medium or large backpack. I mostly find these at ammo depots labeled on your map by the ammo symbol or in random lockers around the map. Forewarning, this slot is also kind of bugged right now. So if you extract and try to bring in one of your contraband weapons in that third slot, they aren't always showing up when you drop in. You get them when you get back to base, but you're not able to use them in that current raid. Now let's talk about advanced PVP tips for the DMZ. Most of your interactions will be with the hard hitting enemy AI, but exfilling, getting weapon cases, or even completing some of the faction missions are gonna force you into encounters with other players. So it's important to have some tips and tricks up your sleeve to give you a competitive edge. One of the most neglected is snagging enemy dogs dog tags off of a player that you killed. This reveals your location to their surviving squad mates. So long as you have them in your inventory, their team can find you. But if you drop the dog tags, the enemy team still has the tracker on them, so they're gonna think that you are wherever the dog tags are. If they're still hunting you, drop the dog tags in a good spot where you can move somewhere else and have a vantage point on that location. Or ditch them if you have something important on you and just wanna extract, effectively throwing them off your scent. UAV towers are also being underused. We all know that UAV towers can be activated, revealing the location of enemy AI, as well as other players within a certain circumference. We now know that that range is actually 120 meters to be exact. Thanks to my boy Fixate, another DMZ YouTuber that you should check out if you haven't already. So basically, if an enemy team has activated a UAV tower nearby, you can hop on your TAC map, ping the center of the UAV, which will bring up the distance you are from that POI in the field. This allows you to know how close you are to it and avoid being detected by the players that activated it. But more importantly, the UAV tower is a bit OP. They probably need to fix this. But if you activate the tower and stay at the terminal, once the UAV runs out, you can just start it up again, giving you endless UAV of that area. This is extremely useful if you're being hunted by an enemy squad or if you're in a congested area on the map and you just want some easy kills. You could literally just sit at the tower for an entire match, constantly initiating the UAV and waiting for players to fall into your trap. I honestly think that Infinity Ward should add a certain number of uses that a player gets per tower per match but for now it's unlimited. Use that to your advantage. It's also helpful to know at the beginning of a match where all the player's spawns are so that you can anticipate where you may cross paths, avoid them if you're not looking for PvP this match, or chase them down if you're looking for some player kills. I have no idea who made this, so if you have the name, please post it in the comments below. But somebody made a map of all the player's spawns and even took the initiative to label them according to difficulty. Red being the most dangerous spawns, yellow being decent cover from enemy players, and green is generally a safe place to spawn from PvP. And from looking them over, I'd say it's pretty accurate. Every time I spawn near the port or Sawa Village, I often encounter enemy players pretty quickly. Either way, if you don't have this map saved, you should. So I did post it in our DMZ Discord and we'll be adding it to our DMZ interactive map website, dmzintel.com, shortly. Link for both is in the description below. Now, Giga Chads, get up and go touch grass for a second. This PvP tip is for all the Timmies out there that aren't really the best at PvP. Stop playing DMZ like it's Warzone. Stop rushing. PvP isn't a necessity and in most situations doesn't even yield that high of a reward in comparison to successfully completing your faction missions. The timer starts at 25 minutes before the radiation hits, so you have plenty of time to slow it down and make sure that you make it out alive. If you need to hide for a bit from some players or even slowly sneak your way through one of the more heavy enemy AI areas like Akdar Village or the Observatory, then do it. Unless the radiation circle is moving, then it's back to playing like Warzone again. But until then, slow it down. And there's no reason to rush enemy squads or try to complete tough missions unless you're fully geared up. I'm talking with good weapons, a three plate carrier, a gas mask, cause you never know, a self revive, and preferably a medium or a large backpack. So you can carry those extra plates and revives. If you don't have all of those items in your loadout, the three easiest locations to get everything you need are the train, with multiple green and orange crates, some medicine cabinets, and a hidden cache, you can never go wrong with the train. Unless it's passing Akdar Village, they still haven't fixed the bug where the AI can shoot and see you through the train, which sucks. 
But anywhere else, the train is your best place to gear up. Secondarily, hitting all the ammo depots around the map can also yield anything from backpacks, plate carriers, to even kill streaks. But one of my favorite locations to easily gear up since launch is the sunken ship at the bottom of the map. There's multiple lockers throughout the cabins, as well as a weapons locker on the third lowest level. Strongholds and the other major POIs have some of the best loot, but these three locations are the easiest to get in and out without alerting enemy players. But I gotta say, it helps to have a ride. The best vehicle in the DMZ is obviously the heli, and I just recently found out that you can refuel and repair at gas stations without even landing by simply hovering just low enough to get the meter going and without alerting enemy AI at the location. That's smart. On top of that, any of the vehicles can repair and refuel even if you're not inside them. So you can drop a car off at the gas station and then hop out, wipe the surrounding AI or loot a bit and then come back to a fully refueled and repaired vehicle. Also smart. Besides the heli, my other two favorite vehicles are the Hummer EV because of its speed and it takes much longer to run out of gas and then the armored truck it has superior damage resistance to not only last longer under fire but shields the players inside better than most of the other common vehicles you can find most of the time when i exfil i'll drop off a squad mate to call in the chopper or hop out myself and call it in and then hop back into the vehicle drive around a bit till it lands and this keeps me as a moving target gives me cover from attackers and it allows me to scout out the surrounding area so that nobody sneaks up on us trying to yoink our extract. Now, if you learned anything from this video, make sure to drop a like for the algorithm and check out my favorite GPU loot run. This has the highest yield for one of the rarest items in the DMZ. See you there. We'll do it. Go click it. I can't, you gotta click it. I can't go any, dude, I can't go anywhere until you click it. Click it, just click it.